Hey, what's up guys, Mirai here. And in this video, I'm going to be covering the basics of using ISBoxer's video effects. But before getting started, there's three things I'd like to cover. First, the video effects feature relies on the Microsoft Windows Desktop Window Manager, or DWM for short. If you're using Windows 8, then this feature is always enabled, so there shouldn't be anything else you need to do before being able to use video effects. If you're using Windows 7 or Windows Vista, then you'll need to make sure that the arrow feature is enabled. And you can do so by choosing any arrow enabled theme under the personalization options. If you're not familiar with how to do this, there are numerous guides on the internet which show how to enable arrow in both Windows 7 and Windows Vista if you're having trouble. If you're using Windows XP, then you're shit out of luck because Windows XP doesn't have DWM. And if you're using any other operating system, then it's up to you to see if the desktop window manager feature exists and is enabled. Second, video effects cannot currently be used across multiple computers. However, Lax is always looking to improve upon both ISBoxer and Innerspace, so it may be possible in the future, but as of this video guide, it is not. Third, the regions in your window layout and the resolutions of your game clients need to match because if they don't, then you'll end up with blurry or pixelated video effects windows like you're seeing here. If this is happening to you, then check the description of this video for a link which will explain what is happening and how to go about fixing it. With all of that being said, let's get this party started. I'm going to be demonstrating this with only two clients because it's easier for those who are watching to see what I'm doing. But anything that's being done in this video is true for any amount of clients that you're running. Now, the video effects options can be found on the video effects tab in the ISBoxer in-game GUI, also referred to as the ISBoxer control panel. There's a bunch of options to play with, but ultimately what you need to understand is that there are two parts to any working video effects setup, a viewer and a source. A viewer and a source. All right, so let's get down to business. Let's say that I wanted to see my second character's unit frame on my main character's screen. So on his screen, I'll bring up the video effects options the same way that I brought them up on my main. And then I'll select video effects source from the top dropdown. Remember, whenever you want to designate a portion of any game client to be used or viewed somewhere else, it needs to be set up as a video effects source. Next, it needs a name, preferably something that makes sense and doesn't lead in with a number. If I knew the dimensions of the unit frame beforehand, I could enter those in if I wanted to, but it's not a big deal because I can just resize it later. So hit add and two more things pop up on the screen, a green box and an editor. Now let's take a look at this green box labeled source unit frame. It's telling me that this particular box is a source and its name is unit frame, which is the name we just gave it. Now, when you first create a source, you'll most likely need to reposition it. So click on its title bar and drag it to where it needs to be. And you'll notice that when I get near the edge of the screen, the source snaps into place. If you don't want that behavior, then you can hold the shift key down and this won't happen. Now, once you've got the source relatively positioned where you want it, you can resize it by dragging the edges. It doesn't have to be perfect because I'll show you how to fine tune this in a minute. And I'm just gonna leave it like this for now. After that's done, close out of the icebox or control panel with the same shortcut you used to open it and then head back over to the main client and choose to set up a video effects viewer. The drop down below that labeled video effects name holds all the possible video effects sources you can choose from. And you can see that there's the Uniframe source we just created. So I'm going to select that. If I wanted, I could also key in the width or the height, adjust the opacity or add a colored border before I create it. But I'm not going to do any of that right now. I'm just going to hit add. And again, two more familiar boxes pop up that we just saw in the other window. This time you can see the green box says viewer in unit frame because it's going to be viewing the source we just created with the same name. At the moment, it's not showing anything, but there are some directions here for you to follow. Be on Windows Vista or later, check. Have arrow enabled, check. Hold control if the control panel is open. The control panel is open, so I'll hold control and there's my unit frame from the other window, just like magic. So as before, I want to reposition and resize it so that it, it looks kind of normal. All right, I guess that looks good. 
Now I can exit out of the control panel on this screen as well. And there you have it, my other character's unit frame from the other game window. Now I purposely did a terrible job when creating the source so I could show you guys how to fix it. And now I'm going to fine tune it. So I'll hop back over to the second screen, open the control panel again, and where are the settings? How do I, how do I change the settings for this source? Well, if you click on a viewer or a source, it will bring up the settings for it in the VFX editor. So right at the top, it displays the X and Y coordinates where this particular source is sitting on the screen, and it also displays the width and the height. The drop down below this lets you select whether this particular item should be a viewer or a source, which you probably won't ever use unless you accidentally set it up wrong to begin with. Below that is the name of the source, and you can give it a new one if you'd like, but if you do rename the source, it may or may not break any other viewers that are looking at it, so keep that in mind. Below that are the on-screen coordinates and the dimensions, which can be manually adjusted, and at the bottom is the apply button, which needs to be pressed if you want your changes to take effect. I won't be covering the enable video effects focus hotkey checkbox, nor will I be covering the sync button in this video. So looking at my source, it could be placed a little bit better because right now it's being cut off and it looks like crap. So I can either drag the edges around until I'm happy with it, or I can just punch in some numbers into the editor. Now, for the sake of saving time in this tutorial, I already know what values I need to put in so that you're not sitting here watching me bumble around and guess at this. All right, that looks much better. However, if you look at the main window, you'll notice that it still looks kind of weird. And that's because the viewer isn't using the same width and height as the source. So we need to fix that. We can see that this source is using 220 by 95. So close out of all this because we're done here. And over in the main client, we'll bring up the VFX editor for this viewer and edit those numbers. 220 for the width and 95 for the height. Hit apply and there you go. Now we just went through all this hard work and it would be a damn shame if we happened to lose it. So we should probably save it. There's a button labeled save as at the bottom of the video effects tab in the control panel. In fact, there are several tabs that have this same identical save as button, so make sure you're on the correct tab when saving your video effects layout. Now, if you choose to save it as auto, then everything that's been configured will automatically load with your character set each time you start it up. But if you save it as something else, then you'll have to manually load that VFX set each time by choosing it from the drop down menu and then pressing load. A final note about saving is that you only need to save from one character screen and it will save all of your active video effects and all of your windows for this entire character set. Well, I think that pretty much covers the very basics of video effects. And if you have any further questions, comments, or concerns, please visit the Icebox forum or the live chat.